you start as one person and you go on that journey. And as you go on that journey, you'll meet lots of different people. You'll have lots of different experiences. And then you'll eventually go back round full circle. And when you get back to that point that you started, we think you started, you're always far wiser than the person you were when you started that journey. So irrespective of what that outcome is, you've still grown as a person. You still gained creativity. You still gained, you know, life experience as you've gone on that journey. Um, I guess, first of all, would you be able to kind of give me a little bit of insight and the people listening about how you got started in the world of entrepreneurship? Um, I did some research into your background and it looked like you made a switch from kind of working, I guess, a regular job over to um, the world of entrepreneurship. So can you tell me a little bit about that? Um, and yes, you're right. I did. Um, I've had quite an uh, eclectic um, career. I think that's a really good word probably to describe it. Um, and as a result, I have um, quite a big tool bag that's filled with those experiences. Um, so the first 11 years of my career actually um, was very corporate led. Um, so I worked for companies like Marks and Spencer, Skype, um, Hewlett Packard, Compaq, um, which was eventually bought out by HP actually. Um, and so I, I did a lot of work within the technology space um, mm. and very much around kind of e-commerce and MarTech and all those things. And as a result, gained a lot of delivery experience. And but there was always this side of me that kind of existed outside work, which was always very, very creative, um, very entrepreneurial. You know, I used to do random things when I was at university. You know, I made cards and things and sold them in the shops. So that was at university. Um, when I was at one of my roles, I think it was at HP, I ran a side hustle business that supplied all the pets at home stores um, with my own design. Um, designed um, doggy accessories, which actually went on to be on QVC, and I held the Korean the Korean license for Mister Men. So we did like all Mister Men like T-shirts and things like that for dogs. Yeah, that's so cool. <laughs> so I've always yeah, so I've always had this really fun side of my I suppose personality, um, and it was always a really nice balance. And then um, things started to change very much after I had my daughter. And I decided I didn't actually want to be away from home all the time, you know, um, in the office in a week. I think around when Alice was two, I was doing like 14, 15 hour days in Paddington, which really wasn't a thing like a fit for me. So life just started to naturally change. Um, and as a result from that, yes, you're right. I leapt into entrepreneurialism and did, you know, created my own business, which was very successful. And I ran for a number of years. And then once I was... I guess that um, business then cycled. And I think after we that cycled, I went back to consulting um, because it's really interesting, actually. You do find that your CV and all of the skills and everything that you have, you tend to always at some point in your life lean back into them. And I really needed to kind of lean back into that, not only to refresh my skill set, but also rebuild confidence and lots of things because entrepreneurism will get you every which way. Yes. Yes. <laughs> um, and then, you know, once we were able to, I did that, you know, and, and I did a huge, I delivered a huge program for um, the Motor Insurance Bureau, actually, for one of the big consultancies. Um, and I did some work, but again, I was away from home for a number mm. of days, a, a week, you know, three, four days a week. And I was like, mm, that's not the best fit. So maybe it's time to go again. And that's what I did. I just went again. Um, and for each evolution of FE and each evolution of my career, um, you know, there's something better that has always come from, um, that's waiting for me, I suppose, in the, in the next phase of whatever I'm trying to do. And so now we're at um, the point of um, Boost Agency. So that's my, my business. Um, and Boost really is just an extension of me. Um, so when, as Effie, you know, people will um, refer me and ask me to go and consult and do lots of different work and come into their business and all these things. And in the end, I just stood still. And I think it was after last year, I got pulled into a business that I was only meant to support for two days a week and ended up almost being there full time to try and turn them around and do all these things and I just thought oh gosh and at the end of it I was like you know there's so oh, you know there was the potential to kind of um explore the business um at, at a deeper level and I, I really realized that actually what I really wanted to do was to create my own thing and yeah. so Boost was born and, it, and as you probably know with Boost it is a very interesting brand um it's very um full of character 
Um, but I think that really personifies my personality um, and how I am to work with, um, which is, yeah, just, I hope, good fun. <laughs> and was it you that kind of came up with those with those characters? Yes. So I have a wonderful designer I work with called Stu. And Stu and I have worked with um, each other on different client projects over the years. And um, I went to him and said, just because I'm really crazy, but I'd like a character for Boost. That one that represents sales, one represents marketing, one to represent coaching and one to represent business. Because these are all the elements that normally make up my tool bag or the reason why people may ask me to support them. It's normally for one of those areas. And we had great fun. So much fun going back and forth, trying to create them. I mean, the fox was hilarious. I don't know if anyone's seen the fox, but the fox was hilarious. At one point, we did have a bit of a worry moment when he had a bit of an accident with the tail and placed it in the wrong direction. I said, I can't go live with that. <laughs> <laughs> so we've had some little accidents along the way, but we've, yeah. we've had the best time. And I think actually it just makes the fun, the work, the brand fun to be part of. Um, you know, yeah. our clients like it. Our team loves it, you know, and I can't wait to start um, really branding more mugs, branding more everything with them because I think we'd have quite a good time with it. So yeah, yeah, I think I think that's I think that's really really important as well to have fun with what you're doing, right? Like you don't want to be creating a business and it's um, it's boring and it's whatever it is, right? You want to have creativity with it and you want to have fun with it, and yeah, I think that's that's really really good. Um, so when you kind of, what what made you create it? Because you've been in quite a few different businesses over the years. So what, what made you go, yeah, I want to make a, an agency? Well, so in terms of the different, so just I'll take it back to in terms of different businesses, they actually are still things I do. So they're not really things that have just disappeared into the background. So the Handmade Association is very much my coaching business for small business owners, um, simply because my business that I, um, you know, the big the big one, I suppose is one I call it, um, that was very much a handmade e-commerce business. And it was the only business at that time in the UK that scaled a handmade business the way that that, 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 company, that company I grew. And so it was really important to me to be able to give that back. And so with the Handmade Association, it's a community um, of small business owners. And every now and then I'll, I'll dip in and do some coaching. Or if the team, if they need me, then they know they can come and speak to me. Um, we still have very active groups around, around it. So that kind of is something I do um, in my spare time, whatever that now means, um, which is, is great. Um, so that was a massive passion project for, mine, for me. And that's something that I... Um, I just feel like we should all be trying to invest in each other and sharing knowledge and learning from each other, um, not necessarily to avoid the mistakes that we've made, but actually to help people just become more resilient yeah. um, to some of those things. Because some of those things are going to be inevitable. And the only way you can learn, especially through entrepreneurialism, is to actually go through it. Or as I say, grow through it. Um, that's that's the way you can do it, you know to do it um but with boost boost came about because actually as effie as effie on her own i was getting pulled into lots of different directions and when i stood still i was like right what does this you know how do i what do i do with this because you know i could carry on for forever but of course there's that entrepreneurial like <laughs> ticking thing that happens inside um and that's where Boost came about, really. It's always been in the wings. It was just more of a right. definitive, let's just do it now. Let's go. Um, you know, there's no more waiting. There's no need to do that. Mm. Um, and thankfully, she has just been on this roller coaster train since the moment it's been switched on. And partly because we've had clients that have been able to come into Boost because they've been working with me for years. Um, you know, some of our longest seven clients, like four, four and a half years now, I've been with some of them. So they they come over and we ha I have quite a high retention rate, which I just love and I'm very grateful for. Um, and you so what we did right? is we just, yeah, and then we just turned on the tap and boost kind of just flew. <laughs> <laughs> has, has it been, how long has it been going for? Because I had a look at your LinkedIn and it said four months. Yeah. But like the, the results that you've got are very, very good for four yeah, months. Yeah, thank you. That's really kind of you. Um, as a fish, an official entity, Boost only became limited last month. <laughs> so wow. as official entity. Um, but she did actually only come out the gate at the beginning of this year. But as I said, you know, 
Effie as Effie has been existing yeah. for many, many years before that. Um, but as an entity, yes, she has been, she's very new, um, which makes me giggle because actually we're talking to the SEO team at the moment, um, which is um, somebody I've known for a long time and he runs a, a, an SEO agency. Mm. And I was like, you need to come in and help with Boost, not because I can't do it, but because I haven't got time. I was like, you need to come in and just help me. Um, and they're like, it's really new, Effie, but how have you got that many backlinks? I'm like, <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> no idea how i've done it's all good like you know it, it's you know it's all good and can you can you just come in i mean it's really new i'm like i know <laughs> <laughs> that's so it's, good it's that's really really good really good um so what what do you like what, what do you enjoy most about the the whole entrepreneur thing is there one thing that really stands out to you do you know what it's actually with the theme the topic you and i are talking about is creativity I think when you are an entrepreneur, you have the ability to create whatever that might be for you. Um, I don't believe in placing ceilings on people or or anything. And I I, I just think sky's the limit. And that's not just some random phrase. I I genuinely live, breathe, believe it. Um, And you could ask any of my team and they'll be able to tell you that hopefully um, about me in the way that (laughs) I have. Every time I say something, you know, it's somebody I know. So why doesn't that surprise me? (laughs) Because I'm just like, you know, and I'm always 10 steps ahead, um, always looking. And it's been really important over the years to actually make sure that I take the moments to stand still and recognize how far I have come or what I have achieved. I think, you know, 10 years ago, really, I was probably just kept running and didn't have that time to stop and reflect and really feel grateful for all the things that have now, mm. you know, come into fruition. Um, whereas now I'm kind of like my my right eye is like over here, like looking, going, right, what's next? What are we doing? How's that unfolding? Let's go, go, go. Whereas the other one's kind of still very much in the present and now and can balance both and just being very grateful for, for the journey. Mm. Um, and it's really interesting because entrepreneurialism can do several things, I think, to people. The first is, I think, when you're new to it, you're filled with all this excitement and this anticipation, you know, anticipation, and it's like, it's going to be amazing. As you become used to it and you do it and you you, um, fall over and you get back up and, you know, you get burnt a little bit and you experience lots of different things as well as the joy and the fun of it all. um, I think sometimes you'll either sort of almost regret going down that path because you're 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 thinking well oh not again I've got to go and do it again you know but there's a there's with entrepreneurialism I think there's a deep will that sits inside people and I think that comes to the surface so once you've kind of figured out your personal stuff and um, tried to make peace with whatever's been um, you can kind of find a way to dig deep and go right I'm ready to go again let's go and a few years ago, there was a quote which made me just stand still. And I thought, that's just so perfect. And I, I'm sorry, and I might fluff it, fluff it, but because I probably I can't um, this is paraphrase. But it was basically, you know, if you fall back down and you get back up, you're never starting from nothing, but you're starting from experience. And that's really what entrepreneurialism is. It's the ability just to keep springing back mm. and keep creating and keep moving forward and trying different things and I'm going to be a little bit spiritual here and say, like, let life express its way itself through you, um, through your journey, because I think that can be quite powerful. So, mm. yeah. yeah, that's interesting. <laughs> I actually think, um, I mean, I don't know where that where that quote's from, but I think Stephen Bartlett mentioned that on this season of, of Dragon's Den. Oh, someone? did he? Yeah, <laughs> I don't uh, know. <laughs> um, um, yeah, it's definitely not a Stephen Bartlett quote. I think no, it's, uh, no. I, 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 can't, I can't think who it was. I'll have to find that for you but it's just something that's always stuck in my mind and I just thought gosh yeah, yeah that's so true <laughs> so you mentioned like the creativity part of it how are you balancing the I guess the creativity of it all against the the more business head of it well I think for this particular business is I'm doing it by a couple of things so It's taken me a long time to realise that creativity isn't just for product businesses because I have a huge love for product businesses. I'm very, very passionate about them. Um, And it surprises me so much that I'm I'm in service. Like it it was always like one part of who I am. And it's like, oh, okay. 
and I, I never, I, I, ne I never thought I would actually be able to bring creativity to this level to service. I, I really didn't. And when we were then developing Boost and we we're developing the Boost brand, you know, I had a product business and that business also had characters and a very, very strong brand and a strong theme. <laughs> and suddenly I was sitting there like, well, why can't I do it for the service business? And so if I can create this outer layer that's really fun and represents the inside of the company in such a creative way, then that's only going to fuel that creativity inside the company. Mm. Um, and that's also going to fuel the creativity with the clients that we work with, um, who are just lovely, um, and you know our team and the way that we show up. And I think as well, creativity comes from momentum. So it's the ability to keep moving and to keep gaining traction. Um, and that's why I talk about that right eye looking ahead yeah. Um, because that's what fuels the creativity you know it's like well I want to add this and I want to do this and can we make this better and how do we improve this even down to the copy we write you know how do we make it better mm. you know how can we be creative with it you know and when somebody says to me well that's the way it's always been done and I'm like and let's change <laughs> it like that doesn't mean that we have to always do that let's give ourselves a remit to be creative to think outside the box to change stuff I mean after all that's how innovation happens um yeah. So it's kind of those sorts of different areas of the company that um, helps. And also the fact that I am just naturally a very creative person. If you're standing in front of me, you know, I've got a bright red dress on, for example. <laughs> it's like, you know, uh, and um, I hope uh, bubbly per I've got quite bubbly personality, which everyone keeps telling me. So I think it, it's just all infused in all of that, really. Yeah, um, yeah. And do yeah. you think that creativity and failing go hand in hand because the more more recently I've been feeling like I I need to continue to fail because that means I'm pushing the boundaries of, of what I'm doing what, what, so do, you what do you mean that? by fail so I guess not the expected outcome of, of what you would like to see but has the journey to that expected outcome been fulfilling for you well, I guess, yes. Well, then there's your creativity. Because your creativity is in the fulfillment of mm. that, that journey, not necessarily the expected outcome. Um, and so I think that's... focusing on the journey and not the... Yeah, not the always, always. Yeah. We have such an attachment to the outcome, always. And by the way, you know, I was, I've been guilty of this for many years and even now I have to check myself. Um, you know, we measure ourselves by targets. We measure ourselves by revenue forecasts. We measure measure ourselves by the number of clients we have our retention numbers blah, 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 all in business and every time we do that we take away actually the the wonderful experience that we've had in the journey and kind of getting there and, mm. and I just feel like and, and I can say this because I've been I've had my businesses because I have fallen down got back up because I've done all this stuff right um and so it's really interesting to me because I don't use the word fail in my in anything I do I think you can mm. cycle um, because when you cycle, if you think about the hero's journey, right? So when you start, you start as one person and you go on that journey. And as you go on that journey, you'll meet lots of different people. You'll have lots of different experiences. And then you'll eventually go back round full circle. And when you get back to that point that you started, we think you started, you're always far wiser than the person you were when you started that journey. So irrespective of what that outcome is, you've still grown as a person. You still gain creativity. You still gained you know, life experience as you've gone on that journey. Yeah. And entrepreneurialism is just an expression of that. So, yeah. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. I didn't, yeah, I didn't think of that. Um, okay, so from wh whenever you're kind of creating your businesses, are you, are you thinking in terms of the whole customer experience or are you, are you, are you thinking about um, oh, there's there's a gap in the market that I could fill, for example. Um, and if you're thinking about both, what in the kind of customer experience um, way of looking at things are you are you focusing on? Because you're doing things very uniquely. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so. 
customer experience, the way that I view it, I'm just trying, I'm just thinking this through as you're, as you're talking this, about this. It's a very mechanical part of your business, right? It's a, in order to deliver a good customer experience, you have to know who you are serving and why you are serving them. And you have to therefore identify what that gap is that you are going to be filling. So that has to come first and customer's experience and, you know, your delivery set, quality of your delivery and, you know, the type of team that you build, all of those things are very mechanical actions that come from understanding the reason why you have, you're building this company. Um, recently, I was on a call um, with a with somebody who, who I, he, he was in my team last year, like um, we used to call us, he was part of my A team and he went on to create, um, to work for another company. And I was in a call with them because I offered to help with a couple of things um, for, for the business just to review and do some bits and pieces. Um, and he, when, what am I trying to say? Sorry, Jacob, just remind me because I, sometimes I would go so deep in my thoughts, I forget what I'm saying. <laughs> all, all good, all good. One no moment, what so, were you just saying? There was something really pertinent here. So uh, it's about like customer experience how are you tackling customer experience? So when we were, I, I went in to help um, this company, it was just really some, some chats to review their software and everything. And the first question I asked was, why did you build it? How did you build it? Because I'm about to review, review the tool as a customer, potential customer. And he said, well, we went out and we did research and this is what people said that they needed that didn't exist. So hang on a moment. Are you telling me that you went and did customer research and asked people what they needed and built to that? He said, yes. I said, I think you're fabulous. <laughs> that alone was like the best thing for me. Um, and that really personifies how I view stuff. You know, it's like there's no point creating a product that you think you're going you think someone's going to love. I mean, yes, we have these concepts of building an MVP and you know, POC, whatever term you want to use it, and we'll go out to market to test. That's great. But really, you should only be testing an iteration of the thing that you know that's going to actually, hope you know is going to work because you found a gap for it. Yeah. Um, and when it comes to service, service is a really interesting one because I have a very deep why purpose with, with Boost, um, with something personally that I want to achieve. Um, and as a result of that, everything flows from it. All my decisions the way that we show up as a business, the way that we work with our clients, that 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 drives it. Um, and then the experience and everything follows. And, and what is that? What's that why? <laughs> if you can share it. Yeah, no, I'm very happy to share it. It's, it's, it. I have grown businesses and made lots of money, right? I've done all of that. And it never, it was never, it never impacted the quality of my life. It gave me nicer things. Yes, but actually it was the times when I didn't have those things were the times when I felt the most peace and I felt the most joy, right? Which is, um, and this is something that comes from knowing what it's like to fall off a high, very high pedestal and hit rock bottom and have to rebuild yourself back up. It mm. is not an easy journey. And if you do that journey in a way that's demanded of you, you actually start to unpick you as a person and the reason I'm saying this, I'm still a little bit deep, I know, um, but the reason I'm saying this is because as I then started to build out um, companies and as I started to show up, I actually realized that I can create businesses. I can help most businesses flourish. I, I, that's my apparently my gift. I, I can do this. And I feel very lucky to be able to do that. But if I can, if I can do my job and do it really well, and help my team have a better life like then through the work they do with us means that they will gain joy and that then means that they'll then have the means to also go and take extra trips or have freedom to spend with their family or do you know what I mean the small mm. things that brings me so much happiness and those things are already all showing up and then I see my clients and they've got businesses. Now, I'm a big believer that entrepreneurialism is the way to change the world because I think we have the freedom and the ability to be able to do that. We're not constrained by politics and all those kind of things that we have to navigate and slows down momentum, right? Mm. And when I look at cli our clients and the clients that we are working with, 
I know that through through the vehicle of something like marketing, what we're doing is raising their exposure. So if we raise their exposure, they're then able to help more people in the pursuit of what they're trying to do. And there, in, there is then the ripple effect. So mm. for me, it's very, that's how it is. And it's not a, you know, like, it, it, it's to my core being. <laughs> and everybody who knows, like, it's to my core being it's it's the it's it's one of the strongest values i have um and you know everything else that comes from that great but that's that's the core and you know i can see it already i can see it in the people that are working for us i can see the change it's already had on them and their quality of life i can see the impact that we have working with our fab clients and and you know and even our partners um it's just such a privilege to be able to to do that mm. so yeah that's, that's and, and whenever you're kind of working with a brand or deciding whether you're going to work with a brand are you always kind of relating that back to your why then yes always always and I also am very instinctive so I have learned <laughs> <laughs> you know I don't I don't do things I will walk I've walked away from huge deals because they have not been right and I, I've mm. just done it because it's the, it, that was the right thing to do for for me and my team and things like that, you know, I've taken on and taken risks and I've done things that are very exciting as well, which has been great and pushed me out of my comfort zone. But during those periods, my instincts tend to kind of be quite aligned. And I'm very, like I said, I'm very feeling based. Um, and also, you know, with, with my, with the people that I work with, you know, of course you'll have sometimes where there isn't a fit, but the key to that is recognizing that and either de deciding, right, how what's the best way of moving through this or is the best way to move through this actually to 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 part mm -hmm. and there's a lot of maturity i think in, in power in being able to do that um i throw we throw ourselves 100 percent in with the, with our clients so you know we're very aligned with their businesses we know their businesses we're invested in their businesses um and so because of that that energy just has to be right for us um, yeah. And it's funny because, you know, some people say, well, you can't be that picky. You shouldn't be that picky, Effie. <laughs> yes, I can. Why not? <laughs> yeah. 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 Why, not? Why not? You know, because I'm, you know, upholding my values and I'm holding, you know, that I, I work really hard. And I work very long hours, but I still have so much energy doing it because I'm thriving on the fact that, you know, I, I just yeah. genuinely love what I do and it's fun. Yeah. And that comes from working with the right people. And the interesting thing about the brand, I should say this, actually, I am... Um, one of the mechanisms we use um, for Boost is outreach, which is a really interesting concept for me. Um, so we do it for our clients as a service, but we actually also do it for Boost. And because I'm a community person and a relationship person, it threw me. <laughs> I was like, oh, you know. So we had to kind of put certain techniques in place so that I would feel very comfortable with it, i.e. vetting the companies that we were reaching out to, you know, things like that. The templates were never any standard sales templates. They're always FE templates with an FE video, you know, it's all very FE. So that, you know, that came across. And it was ever so funny because I um, normally I'll either get two things. One is, you know, people love the brands and they love the love what we're doing and they'll come and have a chat and hopefully things will go from there. Um, or you'll get people, they'll just make this assumption that it, that we're rubbish <laughs> <laughs> and that it's not very professional because we've got characters in our brand. Yeah. And I just really smile because I think actually it's doing the exact job I need it to do, which is, you know, attracting yeah. the right type of people in, into the company. So I'm all good with that. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. like It's all good. <laughs> yeah, I, I've, I've yeah. kind of done freelance projects in the past and things and it's just like, you know, oh, well, I might as well just accept this client, you know, because it's, it's a project or whatever. And then, you know, <laughs> you're a month into it and it's like, oh, why did I accept this client? <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I know what you mean. Um, That's confidence, though, Jacob. That comes from confidence. I think as you get more and more confident, you know. And also, I mean, I give my heart, my, I used to give my husband heart attacks. I used to leap, like, out of things. And he'd be like, oh, my God. You know, out of the window, like, there, there wasn't this whole thing of, like, just secure the next one, Effie, before you leap. You know, yeah. I was like, no, I have not time for that. Something will catch me. Like, <laughs> let's go. <laughs> the amount of time. But something has always caught me because I've always had that faith. Um, yeah. And so as a result, I think all of those things have kind of built me up to this moment, um, which has been really interesting. Now I look back in hindsight, I'm like, oh, 
Mm. That's why I worked there and I did this and I spoke to this person and blah, blah, blah. Now I can see it all joining. And yeah, there's, there's a nice way to that I think about it in terms of um, you can always connect the dots looking back, <laughs> but you can't connect the dots looking forward. Yeah. So you just have to trust it. Yeah. I um, was talking to somebody yesterday and I said to her, she was telling me about her past experiences, which weren't always that positive. And I said, hey, you have a choice. You can drag all of that stuff into your present and let it impact you, or you can take the good stuff and the things that mean something to you and bring that into your present and leave the rest behind. Mm. And I'm not talking about deep trauma or bad things, right? It's, it's there's certain experiences. Um, and I think it's um, you can always choose to do that, whether it's with a client you should or shouldn't have taken, whether it's with a partner you should or shouldn't have done something with. You know, it's like you, you get to choose. Yeah. Um, and you know, then then you have to live by that choice. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> have fun with that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. And um yeah, you, you spoke a little bit about uh kind of your I guess your way of working in terms of being creative and, and, and free with it. And how are you uh how are you passing that on to your team? You know, because there's a lot of companies that will say oh yeah we are creative or we are open or it's a flat flat structure when in reality it's not right so uh, how are you actually implementing that and, and and seeing the results from that it's i think the best the way to answer that is to ask my team <laughs> yeah. Yeah. and they will tell you right um but this is what i know to be true and yeah actually it's what i know to be true there's a couple of things really one is they are all empowered, all of them, to take decisions, make decisions, to own things. I am always a sounding board and I am always there if anybody needs to talk through something. But I want them to be creative and I want them to to grow in their roles because part of the purpose of, of having Boost and all of it and helping to imp and improving lives and things is that growth. So I really want them to do that. And sometimes I have to push them to actually go beyond what they think that they are capable of, but I know that they're capable of it, right? And that's the strongest thing you can give somebody is belief in, you know, belief. Um, and it was funny because I one of one of my, my ladies, Kate, Katerina, she's my head of operations and growth. And Katerina was with me at, on a on a contract last year when I had gone in to consult in a couple of days. She was my team, my team. And Kate's still, she's with me now. She's full-time in Boost. And she said something to me, um, which was, I think, maybe will help answer your question a little bit. But somebody had gone to her and said, you know, how do you work with Effie? Like, how do you, you know, how do you tell her if you disagree? Or how do you, you know, what do you do? And Kate was sharing this with me openly. So maybe that will help a bit yeah. as well. <laughs> and she said to me, she looked a little bit confused. And she turned around and she said, well, we don't have that. If there's something that's, you know, we want to discuss, we just discuss it. That's not to say we don't challenge each other or we don't we don't disagree, but you can have healthy conflict. You can have yeah. healthy conflicts. And I think people don't really realise that. They think it's a bad thing. Mm. But healthy conflict is growth. And so yeah. that space, yeah. that's it, the space is is where the creativity comes from. It's where you breed it. Um and I think that belief is really, really powerful as well. So but as I said, you need to ask the team that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll do that then. <laughs> And they will tell you. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, I guess going outside of of the world of business, what's uh, what's a goal that you're currently working towards, or wanting to work work towards? My one thing. <laughs> <laughs> I get that impression. <laughs> I really like that. <laughs> um, actually, my focus right now is is boost. It's it's and not from a just a business perspective but a personal so for me right now it's you know I've grown businesses where I've burnt out I've grown businesses where I've just been completely obsessed with them mm. I've grown businesses the other way where I've had very creative energy in it and kind of not pushed it as hard as I should I've done you know had the whole mix and with boost it's kind of this whole piece about balancing you know your personal development your personal growth and making sure you balance and re-energize alongside building a successful company so that's a personal goal and, and it's not mm. really, so it's nothing, it's not a new car or a new this or anything. it's not that for me. It's very much about kind of being able to build a business using all the experiences and everything that I have learned and actually 
putting them, you know, implementing them, but at the same time retaining who I am yeah. because I've worked really hard <laughs> <laughs> to, to know who that person is. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and making it sustainable as yourself. well, right, for a long time. You don't Sorry? Be making it sustainable for, for a long <laughs> time. You don't want to be burning out and, and losing a good thing that you've built. Yeah, exactly. And it's so easy to do, especially during startup phase. Yeah. And then even through scale up, you know, it's there's so many different challenges a business will give you. And you have to you have to maintain a balance. And I never I did not know that, you know, you're talking to somebody who used to work 14, 15, 16 hour days, seven days a week, and I didn't really see my family or anything like that. Hmm. Well, I didn't really end up in a good place after that. You know, whereas I then spent a lot of time working on the things that I like and things that I enjoy. You know, last weekend, bank holiday weekend, I actually had a moment where I sat on the sofa and I said to my husband, I feel a bit guilty, like I should be working something on boost. And he said to me, but why should you be? And I was like, hmm, I've had a really busy week. I've had back-to-back calls nearly every day this week. I've turned out some, you know, an awful volume, hell of a volume of work. Team have all been happy as well. So I was like, hmm. Yeah, I'm exhausted. Right. I'm just going to read the whole weekend. I'm just going to read. And that's all I did. <laughs> and I did not feel like at the end of it, I was just like, right, great. Ready to go again. And then Tuesday yeah. hit. I was like, yay. <laughs> <laughs> and off I went again. <laughs> yeah, do, do that it's every so single important. weekend now. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, I don't know. This weekend we've got another one. I don't know how I'm going to cope with two bank holiday weekends <laughs> in a row, but I'll let you know after. <laughs> So, so what, do you, what do you enjoy doing outside of, of business then? Um, so I read and write an awful lot. Um, I think it's probably my two main things. Um, okay. Actually, I read more than I write. So I read, read, read. <laughs> anything. You give me anything and I'll read it. Um, so I'm an avid reader. Um, and also I am very passionate about sort of making and doing things. So sometimes well will make and do some bits home at home um yeah and just really being present at home i'm afraid it's mm-hmm. not the most exciting i can't tell you that i skydive or anything like that because yeah. i don't do do then? um stories journaling okay. and things like that yeah it's quite fun it's a really good way to express yourself <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've I've had a little look at, at journaling, but never done it myself. Um, but I've heard like a lot of people say very good things about it. Mm. It the powers in the prompts, the journal prompts, and 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 also mm. being brave and courageous enough to go where maybe you don't want to. So mm. I think you know it's a really and it's very I find it personally very therapeutic. But you know everyone expresses themselves differently. Um, but I've always been a writer. I've always loved it. And I think that stemmed from the fact that I'm a reader because um, right. I can immerse myself quite deeply into my books as well and not move. I'm like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and that's it. And then at the end of the month, I've started this thing on LinkedIn now where I'll kind of post the end of the month things that I've read just in the hope that maybe it'd be interesting. And I posted for um, April and actually several people have gone off to buy some of the books and they've been telling me they've gone. And I thought that's wonderful to be able to share because yeah. I think authors need, you know support as well and we should we should share and um it's hilarious this stack is so funny i think there's like eight books there and in the middle of these bridgerton books like really random bridgerton books right like <laughs> just random and then around it it's like deep personal development you yeah. know <laughs> yeah. it's type stuff and in the middle is this like it's just so funny but i'm you know that's 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 it that's that's what I like to do you know and I and I enjoy that I enjoy having the time to self-reflect and but I think that's the zone that's the that's this period of my life I'm in at the moment and that's great hmm. um yeah. you know yeah. so yeah okay. <laughs> amazing well thank you very much for for getting on the on the podcast today thank you very much I mean I know you're very very busy so I appreciate your time it's my pleasure thank you for asking me and I really um I wish you much success with your podcast Jacob <laughs>